last night. Has Um, this is our speaker, Ms. Claire Chung, and yeah, she got out of that terrible traffic, finally. And uh, would you mind to squeeze in a bit, sit in the middle as if possible? If you see any empty seats, try to sit in the center. And um, this session will extend to uh, 4.45. And there will be approximately 10 to 15 minutes on the hands-on session. So please prepare your laptop. And uh, for the time being, like, you know, the projector needs some time to warm up. And uh, <laughs> Ms. Claire Chung is actually um, a PhD student in Chinese University of Hong Kong. Um, She's working on bioinformatics, and she's also a co-author of the book Mapplotlib 2, by example, which is about some professional data visualization. And this session aims to discuss some methods and the best practices in data visualization using Python and Mapplotlib 2. Um, if you have encountered any problems, please feel free to let us, the blue t-shirt, help us know. And for the time being, there's actually another keynote, uh, lightning keynotes in P4704. You may feel free to share for like five to seven minutes and uh, currently it's uh, PyCon Japan is actually sharing. If you're interested, you may proceed to P704, uh, P4704, or you could stay in this session, which will end at around 4.45. Yes, yeah, sorry, we still have some tech issues. Okay, it's up. So may we now have Miss Claire Chung to share with us. Miss Claire Chung, please. And um, first, <laughs> first of all, I'm so sorry about all the delay, Aiden, and for holding up with you guys for so long. Um, well, if I could do an anything about uh, plotting next time, maybe I should plot out all the, the series of mishaps, uh, um, the miserable events, like how how oh, I'm I d even my phone on just got um. Uh, um uh, with some whimsy, I, I couldn't connect to <laughs> the uh, staff, so I felt uh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> sorry to uh, the them for uh, But yeah, let's get uh, into the uh, topic. And today I'm going to talk about uh, my fault lived um, to run an X for my example. So what what's it about? Um, firstly, is something about myself, like how I get to uh, talk about uh, the Matplotlib, is because 
Uh, um, well, I'm studying in, in the COHK for the bioinformatics as the, um, our, our, uh, uh, I have been introduced. And in this lab, I met a very kind and capable now senior called Alan, and he was, uh, he was invited to you know, write a book about metal lip. And because uh, we have been uh, working in closely uh, along on, and we felt that maybe we can work something out together. Uh, so he also invited me and also another uh, senior uh, called Audrin. So we uh, wrote this book, hoping to um, uh, introduce uh, how to use the map of life uh, to uh, bring out better data visualization. And uh, a bit of <laughs> um, ads. Uh, so if you guys uh, feel you interested uh, at some point, so you may just jot it down. Uh, and, and yeah, you get the uh, discounts for these two days within the PyCon. <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah, you want? <laughs> yeah, feel free. Yeah. OK. Three, two, one. OK. Hey, thanks for the interest. <laughs> and um, honestly, uh, I'm not, perhaps you, you guys may feel, I'm afraid you guys may feel a bit disappointed, so I'm not going to go uh, all tech and uh, uh, very um, profound on co coding in this talk, but I'm more like uh, talking about um, how we can make use of the uh, libraries to uh, make the resource that we want. After all, uh, if you uh, want to uh, get, you know, you, you are using Python and you want to get your code working, we, what you all do is to Google and to, to look at the menu and stuff. But what often uh, we will help a lot when we know the keywords or know uh, what it can do before uh, we try to optimize it. So I'm hoping uh, well, uh, perhaps many uh, um, Python experts here can uh, get familiar with the latest changes. Maybe um, you guys haven't uh, if you guys haven't unplugged for a, a while and, and been using um, some older version, maybe you want to get your hands on again. And for everyone uh, I know, uh, um, some friends, maybe it, uh, you're not uh, using Python, and, uh, but you, you are uh, working on some um, data science or even just any uh, work at all, but you get to hope plot and want to present some data. And I think uh, this talk may be useful to you because I want to introduce some data visualization principles. And so, yeah, uh, wh wh why I, s I say hey, this, uh, yeah, there are many ways, even just with a map of life, that you can uh, create the same plot, uh, not to say like the uh, other like plotly or, uh, or, tap or whatever software we have, but I hope that uh, we don't have to repeat the process uh, of, of trying uh, try and error because there are so many roles to choose, and some, at some point, one uh, is not compatible to another. And so, um, this. I know uh, yeah, there's some theory and protocol, oh, oh, um, but I'll keep the protocol one uh, uh, shorter. Um, I'm going to talk about, um, obviously, the map of life, uh, what's data visualization, and uh, some uh, uh, basic of how to use it in case uh, there are some, um, of you uh, are not using Python for all plotting at the moment. And I would like to show how the, um, some of the very diverse types of plots that MapLife can do, and also some technique how you can uh, tune it to uh, uh, how you would want it to be, uh, why to uh, tune it, and so on. And um, yeah, well, oh, I guess I uh, pretty much uh, talk about this. And yes, MapLife, as uh, you may have heard, um, it's a Python package for data visualization, and and you may heard about. Uh, I know you heard about the uh, Plotly, and, and so. But actually, Matplotlib is the my background of um, many of the extensions like the Seaborn, and, and uh, what's good about it is that it is uh, very uh, ready for many platforms. Not only it provides the uh, uh, native UI that you can and uh, interactively uh, manipulate it uh, on the fly and. So you can just run a script uh, dot pi and the plus will show up. You uh, um, you also want to uh, uh, integrate it into the uh, Jupyter Notebook. It is um, a very um, uh, much integrated. 
uh, and uh, Gryffindor notebook is um, the environment that I uh, mostly use today. If uh, I will talk about that more, and for the more advanced uh, developers, I think you may be interested into the um, uh, web applications, how to make the real time and applications, and. I think uh, many of us here may be interested is that um, uh, the method lab is open source. Like a Plotly, you need to register an account. Like some other software, it may be very um, expensive. Uh, but actually, we can do it with this uh, free so package with just uh, some lines of code of ourselves. OK, so why data visualization? Actually, a few days ago, I asked my friends, um, uh, are you doing any data? Uh, they are not in the uh, data scientist field, uh, uh, not studying PhD like I do. Um, uh, so, but some of them, like uh, they do some trade statistics. Of course, they uh, do some, especially it uh, use Excel every day. But uh, something I heard about uh, interests me is that a doctor um, who's doing histology, she told me, uh, oh, I don't do any uh, data, but uh, um, well, I do report some numbers. I report like how long does it take to uh, uh, for a case to uh, be uh, closed. Um, well, the three days is uh, I made it up. Uh, I ha haven't uh, asked her in this detail, but uh, I was like, oh, this poor you. I uh, I know that um, for each case that uh, you have to study it. The complexity is surely different. Like, how can you compare a very difficult case uh, uh, with uh, that you need to do like um, dozens of staining and looking at the microscope for a thousand times with one that you can just think once, look at it, and done. And, and so sometimes numbers alone really are not informative. Maybe you'll say, um, that's because you just have one number, the average. That's not exactly true. Uh, from what I'm studying about informatics, it's basically to collect the uh, uh, whole, whole like, gene insets of the whole, uh, um, for, for me, like human being, a whole organism, be it a cat or a dog. Um, for well, like human being, you have um, dozens of thousands of genes. That is truly a lot of numbers. But is that informative? Um, I just copy out um, like I, uh, several rows of m my data results, and and you see, I I don't think anyone can make sense of it. Uh, or what does it say? Uh, um, even if I have given you the um, the x uh, like each one stands for a transcript, a, a gene, and um, I don't think anyone can really make sense of what it is. Uh, the, well, why? It's because our brain is not designed uh, to well, um, do the calculation for so many data and so many layers of data. That's how we need data visualization. But does it mean that we just draw it out? Let's see. Well, we have a lot of data. <laughs> we have a lot of colors. We have drawn it out. But anyone want to read it? <laughs> At least I don't. So data visualization is actually um, uh, the combination between the statistics and design. Of course, we have to be truthful for the statistics, but we also have to care about how the readers are going to perceive it. It makes a difference of whether our message gets up for us or not. And who will need this part? And perhaps you guys are, are more familiar, but sometimes maybe your friends and they may think that, oh, I'm just working in an office I, that don't handle data. Does it m matter? And I'm not a scientist. I don't have to publish a very uh, um, figure, uh, or I don't have to market it to somebody. But actually, uh, nowadays, as the uh, data science is getting um, more and more popular, and it in, you know about all the big data, and so it actually affects all of us. Even if you don't try to get all the big data from on online, so knowing how to easily plot some um, data out really helps uh, when you are uh, going to analyze some, maybe just 
like what I put here like uh, how how you control all your monthly spending, or maybe uh, your uh, utility bills. I think it will surely help uh, to uh, look at like uh, the electricity bill. Also got some bar chart like you can see the trend of whether I I used more electricity this summer than the last one. Or so um, it's more uh, uh, easily interpretable though than the now uh, the numbers themselves. So. Um, is any of uh, you ever feel this way, or do uh, any of you have friends that ever feel this way? Um, how do uh, we have a lot of data, but I don't know how to show it. Or well, I simply want to draw particular plots, but it seems uh, not so easy. From my experience, because I work in a lab uh, that shares a corridor of the next step that is not working on computers. The, I find <laughs> what I find is that they are uh, have difficulty to draw plots, even they have access to a uh, very expensive software. And sometimes, um, maybe you guys are already experts, but what I have, um, uh, I'll come on through this way because um, I have learned uh, more or less uh, started with self-learning. So at the first, as I. Uh, Kind of copyism code, and they, they look. Look, um, I I know it works. I know how to uh, to tune on it to uh, get to uh, work my own way. But sometimes the combination and it's not so easy. Maybe yeah, I can find it. But after like some dozen and uh, uh, uh step by step googling, so uh, we what we are thinking is that what if we can uh, create a better course, a more systematic course for others to learn. Well, this is nothing special, right? Um, yeah, I guess anyone who knows Maple like, uh, can draw something like this. But uh, as I said, this uh, was drawn by some very, very expensive software. Um, any no uh, anyone knows or what this is? <laughs> okay, um, okay. Um, that's called Prism. Um, I hope of this <laughs> is okay for me to, to tell, but uh, mostly. Uh, it's just a plot, and it's even featured as uh, on a, a web page. The even easier box plot and pretty easy. And th what the web page is saying, like I got this very pretty plot, uh, but uh, with the first, um, I kind of scrolled a few times to make sure. Oh, I didn't uh, make it wrong. Like th he's only using Prism. Yes, he is. Well. Uh, if we look at the uh, URL, now the, the link says is in 2012. So, uh, um, ev not everyone is so ready for you know, getting cold. But uh, my message is that um, if you do have friends um, who uh, around who are, are not so uh, tech savvy as you, but you can really encourage them to get into this uh, community. And I always do some <laughs> um, kind of preaching and for, for Python because I really like Python more than like say R. That's my personal preference. Uh, preference, but like I feel the manipulation of the data structures, at least, at least I don't have to switch a few types uh, that is should just be an array. Um, and this is just another example that yeah, you can draw stacked bars and you can draw, uh, and that costs like USD 35 per month and yeah, that's a bit <laughs> ridiculous to me. Well, yes, it draws better plots than the prism, I think. Uh, it draws some geographical data, but is this that impossible? Um, yeah, so why rep uh, the, the, and yes, we uh, just, uh, go ahead is that we can draw the uh, geographical and many more data, yeah, the, the, the diverse plot types. And we can uh, say customize uh, anything. If you use those software, there is a limit of range issues. Of course, they try to um, uh, automate that so make it prettier uh, uh, to start with, but then sometimes we really don't want uh, to be limited by that. We want to get every element tuned to our own way, to suit our own purpose. And the uh, object-oriented structure of method life uh, uh, actually suits this purpose very well. And for reproducibility, it is actually trying to save our own work. 
But because everything is code based, and and we don't have to log in in with some um, uh, accounts. We don't have to register. Uh, we just have to install the Mapper Olive into our own machine. It's local. You got control of everything, and and everything is directly pipeline from your scripts. You, you are not um not bound by let's say the server got down or something, and then you can uh, not get good results, and. Uh, it's very convenient, um, as uh, we already have heard about um, uh, pandas, so basically you can just pipe the dot plot dot um, request to get the first uh, preliminary plot, and then you tune the aesthetics and how it looks uh, afterwards. And well, I'm a bit pr practical, or, uh, uh, but yeah, open, open source is free in many ways. We are free to create anything we want. We are free to share uh, uh, what we, we have created with the community. Uh, and and uh, everyone in this can give and take and improve uh, as a community. And it's free in monetary value. <laughs> yes, so, um, so oh, uh, here's something about, uh, for uh, those of you already familiar with MATLAB, um, just in case you uh, may not uh, follow all the um, uh, document uh, by version and so closely. This is something that's changed. And uh, for the uh, car cycle, um, previously we got some, um, you can already identify the blue and green and red as obviously like 255, uh, blue 255, green, and that may not look so pretty and you have to tune it, it each time yourself maybe. And there are seven uh, colors previously, so you get all 10, so you don't have to set it if you, uh, um, it's by default unless you get over that. And uh, the something that's trivial is that you can see for the color map, it, well, the jet color uh, map is quite um, common, we see it everywhere. It is not so intuitive. And you jump from um, the uh, you see the scale bar like zero to zero point zero two. You already got the transition. It's like from red to yellow. It's like a huge jump. There's there are some steps you, know, you go, but there aren't steps for continuous numbers. And I think you may feel uh, better with the uh, for this um, color scheme. And so it's now being default, and you you can even choose some color scheme. In, in this way, uh, that may be one of the concerns you may have, and yeah, th it basically it looks pretty. Uh, firstly, uh, you don't uh, if even if you have two labels, they all, all look the same unless you tune it. Now it got uh, goes uh, the with the color cycle. So uh, at, at least uh, unless you want other colors, you you or have a set, and also uh, the dashes um. um more tune to uh, match the uh, line width, so also save our work. Yeah, and like the legend, it automatically s it serves uh, just for the so-called best location, so it doesn't uh, overlap your data. And something more about this, uh, nowadays we, we want to be um, more, sometimes more fancy with, uh, uh, and the Previously, there uh, is not the RGBA um, support for every API every function. And well, it is not something new if we, if we think about the HTML05 and, and, and stuff, and we actually can tune everything. Now it's supported. And, and when you load, render the image or text and, and or the video, oh, it, everything just got faster. So um, not sure how many of you actually um, are not looking into or like uh, how every elements are uh, mapped. I'm sure you know about the figure. It's just basically the whole thing. Access, yeah, sometimes you overlay the area that you actually draw data. Sometimes you overlay like uh, the access one, access two, like, uh, you often see AX1, AX2, or that maybe you overlap. Um, uh, one data set with another one plot, like box plot uh, with just one plot, uh, or here like some the dot plot with the line plot. So uh, what you do is you draw multiple of the axes in plural and you overlay them before you show them. And 
but some minor things we, we may not be as um uh, uh, have may not uh, uh, notice as well well is the like the spines um and that that's basically the box that closed the uh, uh, access area. Sometimes you uh, for like science you don't want to uh, uh, get the uh, all four spines and they, they are removable one by one. And sometimes uh, and basically uh, like I, I put each and every element, even each and every dot, if you want, you can tune it. And yeah. For to get organized, I think uh, it's very useful to get a notebook. And Jupyter Notebook is one that allows you to work on there and save it and share it uh, very conveniently. And yeah, in the later uh, particle uh, section, uh, um, we are you can uh, go and try uh, with, with the uh, try dot Jupyter uh, dot org is basically an online server hosted by the Jupyter, uh, so uh, we don't have to install anything before we get our hands on. And um, yeah, and some more advantages is that besides getting easier to export and exchange your ideas and uh, run it directly. Uh, whatever you oh, um, uh, like, uh, yeah, you also, uh, previous sessions also showed it, like your data and methods, uh, your definition and functions, everything's stored and you don't have to load it every uh, a time, so it will run much quicker. Okay, I hope there is uh, there are somebody who hasn't uh, used Metalib yet. Um, are there any, <laughs> actually? Um, Okay, and never mind. Uh, just <laughs> okay, I, I just give, you just give this. Um, basically, it, yeah, it's the f we, every time we use it, we have to say this line, and and we have to after uh, we have done everything, we just say hey, uh, figure show it like or when we chat and we say hi and bye. And these are your old friends. You uh, manipulate data with them. The pandas for basically writing the data structures, the numpy to do the calculation. And uh, yeah, it's easy for us to uh, read the um, plain text, but sometimes uh, for, uh, it is uh, not so uh, um, direct. Or it, it would take much more time if we handle them um, from um, like with open and on a file. I I have a friend who has been writing in Python for quite some time, but only recently he is switched to oh, um, pandas. Um, this is quite curious for me because I think this will save a lot of our work. And uh, what we can notice is that we, the pandas actually takes a lot of data type. And uh, for me, I would uh, really uh, get uh, close to uh, what data types the pandas can take because with every uh, uh, version, uh, more can be taken, so uh, again, uh, saves our work. Yeah, um, yeah this is just, uh, uh, you know, n NumPy, this craze. The first plot, you specify the x and y, and if you don't um, specify the any, uh, meaning it will give you a line plot, and this as plain as this. And uh, now, how we look at some more types of plots. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows about the box plot. It's uh, some square and stuff. Uh, and yes, it gives you the median, the quartile, but then and it sometimes the distribution uh, can be different, but the box plot can still look the same. And even if the uh, whiskers are um, a bit longer, shorter, sometimes it's not as easy to uh, uh, identify the uh, distribution. And for this violin, well, I play violin, so oh, I like it uh, more than that. And it actually shows where the um, um, data is uh, enriched, like here. Uh, you Okay, it like uh, you see the fatter ones, you you get more data points there, and the uh, very narrow ones, they got short uh, less data points, and and as you see where the it looks like a tadpole, uh, and and for the green green one, you have a lot of data points, co uh, concentrated down there, but the variance is actually very great, and there are outliers along. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah, and actually, it, well, the Matplotlib documentation says it's a 2D plotting library, but actually, it, with some extension, it's on, not only plots um, in 2D, it can do some basic 3D uh, plotting. And this cat, um, it's also a Peter now book is so has as a data um uh, uh, download from um, online they have all sorts of these three D e models and with some tuning you actually can um, plot the uh, three D well of course plotting a cat should be for fun only but when you have some like physics model you want to do some fluidic model or something the three D plotting will really be if, um, of use. And yeah, the, for the, uh, there are a, a number of third party packages that you may want to use. Like the Seaborn is basically, yeah, at least plot uh, the very m much prettier plots for the simple plots, and it gives you uh, more types of plots like uh, heat maps, and, uh, which I use a lot. And GG Hollow Fields are also like that. For the base map at Cartopy, uh, basically, yes, these are the packages that uh, can uh, plot the geographic data, so you don't have to pay uh, like hundreds of US dollars for to do that. And yeah, I guess um, so some of you may if uh, um, investing. And actually, uh, well, uh, there are uh, many in the uh, packages that uh, give you some um, quoting and every day. But uh, sometimes we we may want to as the scientists we want to get the data ourselves and and do it on our own. For the plotting part, uh, there is actually the finance extension to draw the typical candlestick, uh, and also or you can you can get for the other lines you just get the data and. There are some places where you can get the data, like the Quando package, uh, like the um, uh, Pi, the uh, uh, stock, um, something like that. We have actually had some in a book, but yeah, you can search it. Like even the Google and Yahoo, oh, they have the data sets. So if, if anyone's interested, you can. Yes, this is the heat map. Um, may I have a show of hands? Any of you uh, saw this? Uh, um, uh, say, uh, use this. Use this uh, data. Uh, use this type of plot. Um, how about? Um, oh, uh, I see. It. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how about uh, any of you who handle um, data labels of over like a hundred rows? Always, yeah. Um, well, I, I would think that yes, there, there are ways you can do the uh, um, uh, yeah, well, the s most simplistic way to plot everything in a dot, or you do more sophisticated uh, dimension reduction. But sometimes during the uh, um, exploratory data analysis, um, like this one, we can, but with the heat map, we can uh, immediately identify some um, anomaly here. Um, this is uh, a case we uh, looked at in our book. Uh, what we see is that the uh, uh, suicide, uh, suicide rate in one of the states in U.S. is different from um, the other states. Well, we the although all the um, the downstream analysis find like that uh, it is still decreasing like the other states are, we can obviously uh, identify this one and. Yes, for uh, normal use, it would be uh, useful for uh, exploratory process. And for bioinformaticians and uh, like me, we handle and present uh, heat map every day because we have like um, tens of thousands of uh, genes. And we, even if we extract the uh, most useful, like thousands, it would be a lot to show over in, in any other form. Uh, so we see the like interaction, like. When one goes up, another go, uh, also goes one, uh, and actually, like thousands also uh, go up together. Um, and yes, and the base map uh, is what I mentioned. And so, uh, because here I just want to show you that um, Metflip can do these things. If you're interested, you can. Um, well, a book is one of the way you can uh, find all kinds of uh, resources. 
and yeah, this this one is not an advance, but yeah, some sometimes people will get confused. Um, maybe uh, you guys what the one 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 two 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 o is this basic, and and why I sometimes there's uh, the um it's basically to uh, plot the uh, plot to different uh boxes, and sometimes uh, when we don't want the uh, uh, the subplots to be separated, we can do something like tight layout, and it's all sh they now all share the uh, as, um as, uh, spines, and uh, this is just one of the example of the many ways you can tune every element, and. Yeah, there are m better ways if when you want to uh, 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 the stack the uh, supports of different sizes, you can use uh, packages like this. And yeah, it supports the LaTeX, so you can do, uh, well, you have math on your uh, labels, you can show it. And uh, there are many styles uh, you can uh, use. And the most um, used one is um, I think is seaborn, and when it ju you just see either a uh, gray grid behind and the uh, colorful uh, um, dots and red patches, and you also satisfy. But actually, s um, sometimes you, you want to tune the parameters. You tune it one by one. There are better ways you can like set it once and for all and return to the default uh, by either of the commands and. You can also set your style sheet. Um, I don't go into the detail here, but and yeah, the scale. Um, sometimes our data uh, got some of its outlier that we don't want to miss. We may use the different scales that is native to the method lab. Um, oh sorry, um, let's keep. Yeah, this is just uh, something <laughs> fun. But uh, uh, just to show you that you can add anything to a plot if it helps you to uh, present your uh, your data. You c <laughs> yeah, this I draw this cat because I like cats. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, there you see many shapes. Um, the method that's called the circle, wedge, polygon, eclipse. The polygon basically lets you uh, join any dots and fill it in. And and with the uh, wedge, you you can and draw. Uh, like uh, different and uh, the fan and like or uh, the hollow circles and yeah, the look at the patch collection. Uh, it will help some time. And yeah, sometimes uh, when we want to uh, uh, <laughs> draw some high dimensional data and don't want to get that plot, uh, and look at scikit-learn and, and I'm sure uh, we can find something very useful by not only PCA but maybe also some like. Uh, Disney and other dimensional reduction method to get the plots better uh, understood. And yeah, we can also show more um, images. And this one, uh, what I plotted, um, anyone notice? Uh, this is the Nobel Prize list. And basically, I, I pointed out the, uh, the oldest Nobel laureate and the youngest Nobel laureate. And the young, uh, that lady is Malala, uh, who no, and the uh, peace laureate and for her contribution. And then, uh, yes, yeah, so this example basically shows uh, you join on all the grids and uh, you show image and actually annotate them. And yeah, you can do animation. And yeah, plot to me is more than just code yeah, because um, everyone here are code experts. But uh, sometimes we may want to give more thoughts like um, th dot plots are easy, live plots are easy, but are they the best plots? So you have so many, many on your hands to choose. And, and yeah, uh, this is quite obvious that some of the lines are not obvious. That <laughs> this, uh, although we can tune the RGB A, the A value, and so on, we have to be careful. And if we, we get too fancy, something may be confusing. And uh, we have to look at, like, um, as a scientist, we often have presentation in form of PowerPoint, poster, or uh, articles, the manuscript. And for different um, um, uh, media, uh, we have different concerns, and like poster, you don't ever uh, want to get the color um, of either of the four color values, dim, and yeah, 
And yeah, in method like uh, words, uh, we, uh, sometimes you can get it easier by the poster talk. Um, and there here's uh, some also some uh, psychology behind that. Some uh, when like the continuity, if, if we set two colors the same, and the lines are actually not that uh, like. And why we uh, we want to use different colors because uh, we in intuitively join the uh, close dots together. Um, so I'm um, sorry, um, let's not um, let's um, let's get out. A lot of thanks to the um, organizers and also to the publisher. And let me think. Um, yeah, do we still have? Sorry, uh, I kind of squeezed the hands on to just a few minutes. But uh, what? Maybe I just so show you like our. Uh, GitHub repository for uh, the examples. Um. Yeah, uh, it's this one. Um, if you are interested in, in any uh, of the uh, details of uh, some of the plots I, I just presented, there uh, will, will be um, um, uh, more uh, code on uh, this repository. Um, well, of course, we uh, didn't put the words there. So if uh, your friends are interested uh, in also their explanation, and you guys can get one with a discount. But yeah, yeah, you can also just look at the repositories and see if there's anything useful. And Well, um, for just a few minutes, I I guess uh, I'm sorry that um, um, I didn't leave time for the hands-on session. But uh, if there's an there are any questions or uh, uh, comments, um, I'm happy here to. So uh, thank you, oh everyone, so much. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, yes. Uh, sure. Uh, the Seaborn is actually a high level, oh, a high level than the Mapolib is built based on the Mapolib. The Seaborn provides uh, more, uh, 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 more uh, sophisticated types of the uh, um, uh, plots. For example, let me see if let me um, open. So, oh, maybe it's easy. Let's see. Uh, I can open some example for you. Um, uh, um, maybe I just think. Like for example, when you have um, the uh, heat map in between, uh, in the middle, or the bump plot, uh, you can add a histogram. You can add histogram on the side, and uh, you can join it easier. For map it's not so oh, easy. Uh, not as easy to for you to join and. And also for C born, um, it 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 already has a very uh, beautiful style Im implemented. For a uh, Maple two open zero is already um, if you just go for the style for the simple plots like dot plot, you can just use the use C born style is uh, uh, will do. But previously uh, for the old Maple Leaf, uh, it doesn't work. You have to use the C born if you want to get that beautiful style. So what I would say is that like if you want to draw um. Uh, first of all, like the heat map, uh, I would use that. Um, that would be very difficult uh, for you to create. Uh, maybe you may have to go to uh, uh, the development uh, part of the uh, code or that back up the map uh, if you want to use map up. But if you use heat map, is uh, if you use C one, it's just a few lines. There is the heat map function in in it. Yeah. Uh, well, the uh, advantage I would say is more versatile. Um, uh, there, as for the seaborn, and uh, so, uh, you can't tune. Uh, there, there are uh, limited ways that you can tune it. Uh, but for the map of uh, the like every uh, every element, you get control because it's uh, it's at a lower level than the seaborn, and. And well, so oh, you don't have to touch um, with the uh, code that 
uh, not supposed for average users to touch it. Like um, the Seaborn, uh, it gives you like it's kind of like an AP e e AI that is yeah, of level, but for the LC parameters, um, yes, there. Um, um, I was think that there is also a limited set of plots that the Seaborn can do, but it. Uh, uh, complements the maple lift like what maple uh, lift is not so easy to do the seaborn uh, has easy ways to do but uh, th the the plots are limited and uh, for example you um, don't have uh, let me see um, I can, uh, let me And, and also for, uh, I haven't I mentioned in my talk here, uh, the method that uh, goes directly with the, um, the those backend that you can do the uh, interactive uh, application. Um, well, yes, you have the bouquet a package and, and something like that, uh, but sometimes you would, would want to customize for yourself. Uh, so you would want to go from the uh, lower level to the or start the development like even Seaborn is uh, 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 start uh, uh, like that uh, from method that uh, they have some better idea so they build from it yeah it's the basis kind of um if there's no any other questions thank you miss Chung. <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> And um, this is the end of day one of PyCon Hong Kong 2017. Um, if you have signed up for the speaker's dinner, please uh, proceed to the counter. We will gather there and um, we will head to the venue together. And for day two, the registration time starts at 10.30 a.m. Same place, which is outside uh, LT16.